What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. As you guys can see, Dan's been replaced. Dan doesn't know it yet, but he's officially off Natty News. We've kicked him out. We just can't right. tell his shit anymore. But we've we've leveled up. We actually have uh, WMBF Pro Phil De Guzman joining us on the podcast tonight for his. We we think we've calculated it to be the third outing, which mm-hmm. makes him one of the most frequented guests in <laughs> Natty News bet. Daily history. So welcome. To the podcast again, my friend. Yeah, whether people want it or not, I'm here. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you again for having me. No, no problem, man. Yeah. Uh, before we get into like the the meat and potatoes of this, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, you know, you've you've been now away from the stage for at least you know two months or so now. You you recovered? You feeling good? Yeah, no, I appreciate you asking. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, definitely. Definitely uh, feel like I'm fully recovered. Um, recovered much quicker this time than I did uh, after my 2020 season. Um, mm-hmm. So pretty much after a month, I, I felt like I was yep. good to go. Um, kind of back to normal in terms of hunger and um, even like body image type things. That, that's what really got me the first time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but all the other hormonal stuff and everything um, came came back pretty quickly. So. Yeah, definitely. I uh, think things are pretty good. I, I will say the uh, you you guys are actually going to be the first people to hear this outside of my my wife. But uh, so, hell yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know about news. that. Exclusives, about that, but, exclusive. Uh, it's not great for me, but those damn oh, no. lashes came back. Um, oh shit! Geez, which no. is something I had to deal with the past few weeks. So that that kind of put a hamper on things. But uh, I think I'm over that again for the second time. We'll see. I mean, again, I don't. We don't have to get into detail here, um, but uh, other than that, you know, things haven't been too bad. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jeez. can't kick it, it. When it rains, it pours sometimes, man. Uh, this is what I've learned. Just don't prep. You're good. You don't, you don't need prep. You don't need, <laughs> you don't need this bodybuilding stuff. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Over episode done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yep. <laughs> All right. I think uh, that's somewhat of a segue into what uh, we're going to talk about tonight. Um, when when Phil asked me what we were talking about, my exact words were "bodybuilding as normal people" is what I've called this episode. Um, and, and that's <laughs> I like I, it. I think uh, you know for those that caught the episode we did with uh, Sean Fury and Bally Muscle there last week, this is kind of come up in conversation with what you know, we thought would be pretty cool for them to have in their documentary, but just like how normal guys like us do this whole bodybuilding thing. Mm -hmm. Because I think that like, especially in the enhanced side of the sport, it's, it's like very glamorized, this extreme, like eat, sleep, breathe bodybuilding. You know, I, I wake up, I eat all my meals. I train when I want to train. And as long as I want to train for, and nothing else matters. And even on the the natural side, you know, there's a lot of kind of higher profile names within natural bodybuilding that have like decently large followings that, you know, from the outside looking in, you're like, oh, they're just bodybuilders 24 seven and they don't do anything else and nothing else matters. And I think the the three of us, because we all kind of are at different stages in life with regards to our lives outside of bodybuilding, but we all still do this whole bodybuilding thing. So I, I don't know where I want to start with this. Maybe, maybe James, I'll, I'll give you the floor first with like, how do you balance fatherhood and being a husband and a business owner with your, your bodybuilding aspirations? What does that look like for you? Yeah. So I think it's going to be interesting. My response and Phil's because while I'm kind of like a middle, like gray area, right? Because I am a healthcare practitioner, which does mean like my life, at least my major career started somewhat in fitness and health the whole time I've been a personal trainer. And I just keep kind of almost like adding layers where I'm almost like aspiring to be that like full fledged bodybuilder, right? Like I quit my insurance based job. I'm starting my own where I have started my own practice. For those that don't know, I'm literally building my own private gym in my basement to train people and treat people. So like I don't even have to leave the home. So I'm trying to do the whole thing. Um, and it's, it's changed the reasons why, right? So when it first started, it was like, I need to be a coach so that I can great gain like followers so I can get more clients so that I can like work less in the clinic and just, you know, make a little bit extra money, supplement my income. Then it was like, all right, I want more time freedom because now we have kids. And now that's like exponentially higher now that you have two kids, right? So 
for me, the balance is like, how do I leverage my knowledge? How do I leverage my career? How do I leverage like my flexibility that I've now created for myself to find the balance that I never had? And that's, that's the key is like, I'm looking for balance where those other individuals are trying to do the exact opposite, right? They're going like, how niche can I get? How can I create this life to only cater towards bodybuilding where I'm doing the exact opposite, right? How do I create a life that gives me the time and financial flexibility to be a good father, to be a good husband? to run multiple businesses and to take care of myself from a health perspective, as well as, you know, a bodybuilding perspective. So it's, it's been a fun journey. I don't know if I know the answer. And I think if you've looked, my chapters have evolved continuously. What I think is the next step has changed a thousand different times. Um, But that's the beauty of it all. Did I even answer a question or did I just rant (laughs) a little bit? (laughs) Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> but I don't even re- I don't even remember what I asked. So that doesn't matter. Yeah. No, I, I think I come think that come and comment. What did what did Leroy even ask? Did, yeah. James? <laughs> Christine timestamp this, would you? <laughs> yeah, right. Um no, I think that uh you, you touched on something that that's kind of interesting is that like you see you see these individuals that go hyper hard on bodybuilding right? How do I make every facet of my life basically guide me to being my best within the bodybuilding sphere? Whereas you're, you're doing, like you said, kind of the opposite where it's like, well, how do I structure my life to check off the boxes of being a husband, being a father, being a business owner, then bodybuilding within that sphere, right? Of Mm -hmm. my best in, in multiple spectrums, which Mm -hmm. I think I, and this is where social media gets gets people confused is that like they follow these people and they assume that that's everybody, mm-hmm. which is far, far, far from the truth, right? Mm-hmm. The vast majority, I mean, you even even let, let's take Phil, who's not even in like the coaching and and stuff space, right? Like Phil has a normal job, <laughs> right? No, we know that. from our interview. Yeah, <laughs> you want to it's, call it's, normal, it's different, but it's not <laughs> bodybuilding. Exactly. Really. Not yeah, bodybuilding. that's what I mean. So, so you, you, you take like people who see the the bodybuilders online that they follow, that eat, sleep, and breathe it, and and lifestyle it, and they're like, well, that's not me. So, am I doing this bodybuild? Am I am I am I doing this bodybuilding thing right? But but even the three of us, we are in that camp of like you know, long-term relationship, kids, work, life, and bodybuilding, you know, mm-hmm. is that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll... yeah, I was going to say, Phil, I think you're, I think I want to hear your perspective on it because that for you, we talked about it in the last interview, like how even prepping was very, very difficult, but you know, I can't even imagine the difficulties of being in prep, but also just being away from the family as much as you have to for your job. Right. So, and then the guilt I imagine of when you come back, like, Oh, I gotta, Hey, I gotta run to the gym. I know I've been away for a week, but you know, like it's a whole different layer. So yeah, let's hear it from you. You know, what what are you in my household, James? I mean, that's, (laughs) you're in my head. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you both touched on a lot of good points and and yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, obviously this is going to come out later on, but uh, literally Leroy messaged me just a few hours ago saying, "Hey, let's let's talk about uh, what's up." Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about being a normal guy bodybuilding. I was like, "Hey, yeah, let's." Uh, I'm a normal guy, I guess. I, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so one of the things James, I've been thinking a little bit about, you know, what what we possibly been discussing, and uh, James, you touched on a, a big one, which is is balancing everything, right? Because Cause that's, I mean, uh, uh, maybe that's, maybe that's the biggest thing for most people, but it's, yeah, when you've got so much going on, you're, you're, you're trying to balance everything and, you know, not, you want to make, you know, obviously my family work, everything's a priority, but you want to make building bodybuilding a priority. So, you know, if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. Right. So mm-hmm. it's definitely about uh, finding that, that balance. And I, I, I like how you both put it. I mean, yes, there are people who, um, you know, I, I've met tons of people, uh, like even just at the gym I go to, who uh, both on the natural and enhanced side, you know, 
they their life is bodybuilding, right? Like you said, they they are trying to make everything around them uh, focus and get them to where they need to be from a bodybuilding perspective. And then, hey, I mean, maybe that's you know that's maybe they're able to you know structure how they uh, make a living and, and have an income and you know so that it goes towards that goal, right? I mean, that's 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 uh, yeah, that that's fine. That's that's how. That's how they're structuring. Whereas, and I, I don't know what the majority is, right? I don't know if that's the majority of people or uh, I'd like to, I, I thought for a long time and I'd like to think that kind of the majority of people is, is kind of like, you know, us three sitting here. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, maybe some people's lives um, or, or maybe their jobs are tailored more towards, you know, fitness, uh, if you want to call it that, the fitness industry or allow them or their personal trainers or allows them to um, kind of be around fitness and bodybuilding more. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean they don't have, you know, uh, a family that they, um, you know, need to balance and, and um, you know, other work aspirations, a business, like like you said, James, and, and you know, everyone's got a lot of things going on, right? Um, so... For me, I, and, and again, for for a lot of people, yes, you know, I've got, I've got my, you know, one, my one daughter who's who's now almost two years old. Got a second one on the way. I mean, James, you know how that is. You got you got the two already. Leroy, you got mm -hmm. the one up. So, um, I have my job, which is completely nothing to do with with fitness, which I've talked about a little bit in the past. Um, you know, and then just you know, other stuff. Everyone's got stuff going on, right? So it's definitely been, you know, it takes a while to find that balance, right? Um, you, you definitely have to actually prioritize things. And then, for example, while I was on prep, you know, that was an important aspect, you know, that was an important thing that was going on in my life for a good nine, 10 months. Prep was right up there with, with everything else I had going on. And I can definitely say for the past two months since prep has ended, you know, uh, I think Jeff... Um, Jeff Alberts talks about like the, the bodybuilding dimmer switch, right? I've definitely had that bodybuilder dimmer switch pretty pretty low. I mean, it's not off, right? I, I still kind of live the bodybuilding life and still training when I can and then kind of doing doing what I can in terms of uh, the bodybuilding side of things. But other things have now had to take a priority, right? I mean, my work has... <laughs> I don't think anyone that I work with is, is going to watch this, but not that it was on the back burner before, but it's definitely, you know, I've, I've definitely had to focus a lot more on that these past few months. Um, getting ready for the second baby is, is obviously a huge thing that I'm, I'm I'm doing now. So, yeah, so it's definitely about finding that balance. And then, you know, unfortunately for the time being, you know, um, the bodybuilding side of my life is going to, it's going to probably take a small hit, right? I'm, I'm, I can't go to the gym five, six days a week like I was on prep. Um, I don't have to, but I'm also, you know, I'm not spending as much time, you know, meticulously weighing my food and needing to figure out what to eat. Like I, I can be a little lax there. So um, yeah, that's, uh, yep. I, mm -hmm. I don't know the, if you asked the, me a question either, but that's uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh, no, the, I'm, I love the fact you brought up the dimmer switch. We talk about it all the time, right? I do. Leroy does. Leroy's the first person I heard say it. And I know he heard it from his coach, Cliff. Um, because that is the crucial part that I think, especially the younger bodybuilder doesn't realize because when we look at the dimmer switch, we're looking at all these different things that we have re responsibility wise. When you're a 21 year old, it seems easy because you go to school, you go to your classes if you're in university or you go to your job that's maybe not even your career yet. You, you know, close your, you know, close your slaps up at the desk and then you just go crush it at the gym for three hours, eat your food and watch some YouTube videos about bodybuilding, right? Like there aren't all these other things. And then as you mature and age and kind of get into your career, get into your like familial life, just more layers get added to it where like, when you only have three things to prioritize, it's very easy to prioritize. When you now have like five, six, seven things, other people relying on you, that pressure adds where, yeah, I mean, there's there's almost this level of understanding. And I don't know what it looks like, Leroy, for you and Carrie, Phil, I don't know what it looks like for you and your wife, but like there's a almost an understanding of like, I have to be selfish during prep, but there's a promise underlying that that yeah. will change as soon as prep is over. 
the sacrificing that the significant other is doing for you and and being aware that they are sacrificing is huge right like you're not doing things as well as you think you are right the sacrifice that they're making isn't going unnoticed and that you will repay them in some way for that right i think that's huge for people to understand in that setting should they need to yeah that, that's a big one yeah i mean especially i guess if you have a significant other right i mean a lot of people talk about it and then you know, they deserve all the thanks in the world because it's it's a if you're on prep they're on prep right i mean not obviously in the same way but it's such a i, I you know i don't want to oversell it or undersell it, but i mean it is a huge undertaking going through the prep as, as you both know and you know mm -hmm. people haven't gone through it yet you know it, it, it's definitely a lot i mean um so everything you're going through they're going through also it's the same same type of thing right so yes i i do um you know, like you said, there's there's a huge thanks that needs to be given to them. What was I going to say? Oh, but if you don't have a significant, I, I guess if you don't have a significant other, I mean, it's not like you can't go through prep, but it does, there are aspects of, well, I've never prepped, you know, without my wife. I only prepped the first time, you know, five, four years ago, whatever, um, 2020. Um, so I've never prepped alone. But I can I know that having someone with you throughout the process definitely makes certain things easier. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you know, my wife shaving me definitely a plus. <laughs> um, but there, there's yeah. many benefits to to having them there. But but you're, there's also a lot of you know things that come with it because you do have to account for them and, and um, you do have to make sure that they're taken care of too. Whereas if you don't have someone, then you know I guess everything's on you. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't know if that makes things easier or harder. But yeah, something I've talked to Cliff about a couple of times is like, because I, I like early on in my bodybuilding career, like I started young, like I my first time on stage, I was twenty one, um, so I'm coming up on a decade of like actually competing, and my like attitude and like mindset towards bodybuilding has has taken so many forms over these last ten years, but like when I first started, it was like nothing else mattered. You know what I mean? And I, I was, I was in like relationships at the time too. And I, I can definitely acknowledge that I was like definitely way more selfish and like not as attentive to other people during those times. But I, I used to think, and I, every once in a while, I'll still catch myself thinking that like what I want to achieve because I have all these other areas of my life I need to attend to. And I can't go a hundred percent like, like I, like the, the effort you could put into bodybuilding, if you were like, you know, single, you know, live or like online coach, single, like, uh, not as many bills, you know what I mean? Like the amount of effort you could put into your bodybuilding would be like 10 X what the three of us could do with all the other facets of our life that we're trying to, you know, keep afloat. Mm -hmm. And I've like talked to Cliff about that, where it's like, I catch myself sometimes being like, man you know, with what I want to achieve or what I think I could achieve, like, am I, am I not doing myself enough to do, to make those things happen? And that's where it's like, if you put, you know, he's, he's relayed to me, you know, if you put the most amount of effort in the big things that matter, he's like, you'll be fine. You know, like the 1% that people tout about online that all the 1% add up, like for sure they do. But like, if I make the 80% and maximize that, you, you'll probably be fine. And mm -hmm. one thing that like he's relayed to me that's really stuck out is, is that like a lot of the big, big successful people and, and I, I, two people that come to mind is Doug Miller and Brian Whitaker. He's like, those guys like had jobs, families, kids, and achieved like the biggest things in the sport. Mm -hmm. you know, like Brian Whitaker, I think, he, he's probably like my idol within natural bodybuilding, just with how he is as an athlete, but also just like, you know, university professor, wife, kids, like he was just, he was like us, you know what I mean? Like, I think at the peak of his career, he was just a dude that was a damn good bodybuilder, but didn't throw everything else to the wayside. And mm -hmm. wasn't that like what people see online of being like a, a bodybuilder. That's just like, you know, the black and white photo with the hoodie on, you know, like, and I think that kind of give, gives me peace of mind knowing that like I can be 
still a great father, a great husband, run my coaching business, work full time and be a bodybuilder to a high level because I'm making sure like the big boxes are checked off and you know, I'm not going to wear blue light blockers and I'm not going to grab every supplement that may be a 1% benefit because there's a chance it may happen because it, it just pulls from the other big areas of my life that just don't need to be pulled from more than necessary, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was a really, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the whole Brian Whitaker thing, especially because uh, it's funny, after uh, the last podcast I was on with you guys, I spoke to my coach about it a little bit, Brad Loomis, and he, he literally gave the same example. I mean, he basically said the same thing that Cliff said, um, you know, focus on the big things and what you can and, and do what you can. And, and he gave Brian Whitaker as that same example, right? I mean, you, you said everything um, about him. And, and yeah, if, if ever you, there's someone you, anyone wants to look up to, and if you haven't heard about Brian Whitaker, definitely, definitely yeah. check him out. Um, but you're you're right that that definitely helped put things into perspective. And, and again, maybe you know maybe it doesn't matter what Brian Whitaker or Doug Miller would have done, right? Was, they they could have been in that genetically elite. I, I'm not taking anything away from them, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely helps to uh, it helps knowing that they're you know they're going through the same stuff we're going through, right? And they, yeah. they don't have to have your life revolve around bodybuilding. Um, I, I think what was getting me. Uh, as I was, you know, I, I do still consider myself kind of a very young bodybuilder, if you will. I mean, again, I've only been doing this for the past uh, yep. five or six years or so. Um, what was getting me before I, you know, started having these conversations and, and talking to my coach about it, talking to you guys about it was, it's like, well, not that I can do anything about this, because again, I wouldn't change anything, but it's like, oh man, if I could just, you know, have my life focused around bodybuilding, maybe I'd just be a much better bodybuilder, like, you know. We don't know. I, I don't know that, right? Nobody, you can't, there's no way to compare. Yeah. But uh, again, just, just knowing that, you know, it doesn't, just because maybe there are a, a lot of, you know, elite and high level bodybuilders where their life is like that, it doesn't have to be like that because there are examples of people, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, excelling and competing at a high level. And then, hey, I mean, we're, we're doing the thing. I mean, there's tons of people that have a lot going on and are still great bodybuilders. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. And I think, I think something huge to realize is like, in some ways having that, especially feel like you said, like the significant other in a prep makes you better, right? Like you have that person that you know for a fact you can talk to, to like talk through certain aspects that you otherwise wouldn't. You have someone that can quite literally support you like meal prepping when you don't have time or like you know, there's so many small things that like having that support system just help with. Um, and oh, I feel like I had an even deeper thought, but I, I don't want to like get too sidetracked all at once. But it's, I personally, and I don't know if this is the same to you, I do better when I know someone is relying on me. So yes, the bodybuilding in itself isn't going to like, I'm not going to get a hundred thousand dollar supplement contract because I'm a, you know, top level natural bodybuilder. If I ever do become a pro level bodybuilder, you know, right. Like, but my businesses are tied in a way to my platform, my social media following all those other things. So as I grow as an athlete, theoretically, I could grow as a coach. I could grow as a, you know, physician, blah, blah, blah. Right. So knowing that my career and the financial stability of my family is in some way tied to how I perform and how I handle these preps and knowing that like the food that my kids eat comes from the things that I do directly. Like that drives me forward. And if I didn't have them relying on me, I don't know how hard I would actually push myself, you know, like, and I, I think back to like the, I didn't do a whole prep by myself. But when I was on clinical rotation, there were two different times where I was away from home. Um, Allie and I weren't married yet, but we were engaged one of them and just dating in the other. So I had to live either on my own or like with, uh, you know, in-laws, relatives, all that thing. And there was a lot of time where like knowing that she wasn't there, I didn't have any plans. I wasn't really going anywhere. I would kind of slack. I would just kind of like hang out and lounge like those days were like, I'm too tired. I don't want to get off the couch. I probably should go get some steps or do this or do that or be social. I just didn't because I didn't have anyone that was like 
relying on me to do so. So I think having the family isn't a detriment. Like you guys were saying, like the what ifs, I think honestly, it pushes me forward to do better from a career perspective. Being a father, obviously, I want to set a good example, right? Like accomplish things so the kids can like look back and be proud of what I've done, all that kind of stuff. Um, but to tie off of that, something I've found myself doing a little too much is you you always say like, well, I'm doing this for them. And that's well and good until you start taking on too many things and they suffer because of what you're doing for them, right? Future them might benefit from me picking up this extra client. But if it takes me away from putting my daughter to bed when she's young, are they really benefiting from it, right? So you have to find that happy medium of, I'm doing the things that will set us up for success and set my family up for success in the future, but not take away from the present. And especially in prep when your resources are dwindled, right? That's something that I'm uh, going to be newly exposed to, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. for those that maybe don't know that are listening, I've got my first on the way in April. And, uh, you know, thankfully, we'll have at least three quarters of a year under our belts before I would like theoretically start prep. But, you know, something that you just said, James, that like really resonated with me is like, because I can very much lean into that like workaholic side of me. And if for me, it's like finding that balance of like the, the, you know, angel on my shoulder. That's like, no, it's fine. You're doing it for them. Like just work, man, just work. And then the devil being like, yo, like you've basically been on, like today, for example, like I've been on the go since 5. AM mm -hmm. we're recording this at 8 30 PM. And that's no mm -hmm. joke, right? Like I got up, I trained PT client, you know, quick chat with Carrie, walk the dog, eight hour day at work during that time doing check-ins come home PT client quick dinner before we started this podcast. And here we are. Mm -hmm. And like that stuff's all well and good. But like you said, if that's taking away from what the goal sh is with the thing itself and even mm -hmm. more so, like you said, when resources are even less on prep, when you're like not as mentally present or emotionally present and it's, you know, instead of come home from work and kissing, hey, how was your day, blah, blah, it's come home, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? And that just, that snowballs, right? And like, you know, James knows about my last prep and the challenges I faced through it. I know about challenges he's faced during prep. I'm sure Phil can attest to the same thing. Like when you get that, that emotional checkout, like it just, it sucks. It's not fun. Right. It, it, and it, you know, that's probably an aspect of prep. If you are alone, you can, you can be that, you can be that hermit where it's like, I don't have to be anybody for anybody, but when you're a husband, when you are a father, like your kids, like, like James, you know, James at the dog end of prep and he feels like shit and his little girls come running. Like he better be like, Hey babies, how's it going? Like not mm -hmm. can't do this right now. Like that's not, that's not it. And I think that's where kind of this overarching theme of our podcast of like bodybuilding is normal people. Like you can't, you can't let those other areas fall because they not only are they important, but they're more important in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, something that kind of giving Cliff more credit because he's like my bodybuilding godfather, but like he said, what he sees is the people that have a complete life in all areas. Like, you know, uh, relationship fulfillment, career fulfillment, along with bodybuilding fulfillment. He's like, I always see those people excel because they're not tied to just this one singular area of their life. And especially if, if they put so much weight on that, uh, the achievement within that, you know what I mean? Like when you can love bodybuilding for the sake of bodybuilding and prep for the sake of loving prep and the challenge and this and that, that will carry you farther than just chasing a trophy or chasing a, a, a pro card or a status. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like, I see the people that like they have that one or two seasons and maybe they don't get the results they want and immediately start to fall out of love with it. And then they just fall to the wayside. Whereas like the, the people that it's like, well, bodybuilding means this to me, but I also have these other areas of my life that are so important to me that everything just kind of, you know, in, in some form builds upon itself to create this like overarching positive quality of life where you get that, you know, bodybuilding brings me this 
my family brings me this, my business career brings me this. Like that's when you, you know, you win, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's, I, I mean, yeah, I think you both thought of really good points and um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to focus on, on, on some of that because it's, you know, like you said, Leroy, we're talking about, you know, bodybuilding as a normal person, right? Well, what does, what does that mean? Well, it's, it's basically, you know, any, anyone can bodybuild really, right? I mean, it's not, there's, the the barrier to entry is very low, right? It's not like uh, yep. it's not like trying to get into the NBA or the NFL or anything. You know, not not to say that it's easy, but if you wanted to get started in bodybuilding or, or just fitness in general, right? I mean, it's you know, almost anyone can do it, um, assuming you're physically fit and, and all that stuff or physically able to. Um, but I, I guess you know, none of us it's also different, you know, I like to compare, or a lot of times people compare bodybuilding to other sports, right? A lot of times you're, you're born and like you're thrust into a sport like basketball or baseball or whatever. And you started at a young age and it's like, well, this is what, you know, you're going to do and you're going to make it to the big leagues. And then that's going to be your life. I don't think that's the case with most bodybuilders. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I'd like my kids to to get into to working out and lifting or whatever, but I'm not gonna make them become a bodybuilder. You know, as soon as they can pick up a weight. Speak for um, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, wait till you have a. Yeah. Well, wait till your kid comes. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So it's like, well, it's always important to remember why, why did why did anyone like why do people get into bodybuilding in the first place, right? It's always all kind of always comes back to that why. I mean, I. Again, you know, most people I, I would imagine aren't getting into it to, uh, you know, for, for especially in natural body for, for the money, for one thing, right? This is not a very lucrative sport. Um, yeah, I, obviously, everyone always wants to be the best, um, you know, bodybuilder they, they can be, or, um, you know, you, you always want to do well, but it's, it's important to remember why you're getting into bodybuilding. Like, uh, again, Unless you're getting into bodybuilding to say, yes, I want to be the number one natural bodybuilder in the world and get all these endorsements and make all this money, then then yeah, you probably have to focus your life solely around bodybuilding. And then even then it might not happen. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you're getting into bodybuilding for a number of reasons that that most people get into it, then yeah, it's 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 an aspect of your life. And just like every other aspect, you've got to put, you know, you've got to put time into it, put some you know, more time into it in, in other parts of life than you do in others. Um, but being able to, um, yeah, being able to uh, excel at not just bodybuilding, but, you know, if you're a husband or a wife or a father or a mother or a friend or a brother, I mean, you have to do all of those things, right? I mean, again, I guess if you're bodybuilding as, as a normal person, it's, it's, you know, it's just another aspect of life that uh, yep. you know you're choosing to partake in. So yeah, you've got you've got to find the time and, and and you know spend spend time working on it just like you would if you know anything else mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah, and I think I think the big message is that like, especially when you look at the enhanced, right? And this is something Leroy, you heard me talk about, like with Sean and Valley Muscle, right? Like. When you look at the natural versus the enhanced, the average person is going to see, you know, like an enhanced bodybuilder and just say like, wow, that's impressive, but I can't do that. I don't want to do that. Or that's unattainable for me. I would like the narrative with natural bodybuilding, not to belittle the physiques of natural bodybuilding, right? Because both you guys, I think have phenomenal physiques. I would love for the average person to see you guys in the gym see Phil ripping some heavy deadlifts looking shredded and go, damn, that's awesome. And he did that while traveling, while being a husband, while being a father, like that's a like question. Oh, is that attainable? And be like, yeah, you know what? Actually it is because I did it. I'm doing it. I'm living it and inspire more people to do that. Right. I think the more that people see individuals like both of you, the more the sport will grow because it's not the individual that moves halfway across the world to be at this one specific gym with this one specific team, not throwing shade. I think that's awesome that people do that. But however, that's not the theme of this. Spoiler video, alert, right? I'm moving to Dubai. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Um, yeah, like it's great that people do that, but I think the more people see that, the more they think that uh, that almost is like the expectation where it's like it yeah. doesn't have to be, right? Like you can 
be like the blue collar guy working nine to five or even worse, right? Like, cause honestly, nine to five nowadays is tough to come by, right? Working two jobs, putting food on the table for your kids and still taking care of yourself to the point where you have a respectable physique. Yep. And that's, that's something that I was actually talking to a client about yesterday where it's like, as a coach, you, you want to set an example for people, you know what I mean? And now with me having a, you know, a kid on the way, like I've proven what I can do while being married and being a coach mm-hmm. and that. And then next go around, I can show what I can do with, with a child. You know what I mean? And like you said, I think that that example gives the, the average person hope for lack of a better term where it's like, Oh, well, I, I'm no different than he is. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't need to, you know, focus on all these little minute details. And like you said, move across the world for the best gym. Like, you know, James and I, we, we train in our garages. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I have a good setup, but you like for what you see on Instagram, as far as where people train at and the equipment they have access to and this and that, like my garage gym is, is tiddlywinks next to it. But I, I kind of want to lean into that in my next prep and, and kind of really push that, like you said, like push that story and that narrative of like, look, I am no different than 99% of the people that will be following me or watching my content. I'm not your all in bodybuilder that eats, sleeps and breathes it to the degree that is, you know, pushed through social media. I'm not the guy that's, training at these 10,000 square foot facilities with the cryotherapy and the infrared this and all these things like I don't got the meal prep sponsor I don't got this and that but I have so many other areas in my life that are so much more important that I will show you that you can do and keep functioning at, at even ideally the highest level in the sport right yeah yeah, absolutely. However, as a side note, if anyone's watching this and owns a meal prep company and wants to sponsor us, we would be <laughs> more than obliged to accept that sponsorship. So just keep that out there. Spread the word. I'll, I'll take one too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is there anything else that, that you think is important to touch on? I think we've kind of gone pretty pretty deep this episode, to be honest. Yeah, yeah and James really started touching on some, some real deep life stuff there earlier with uh providing for his family and stuff but uh, <laughs> but no I, I i do like how you you kind of wrap maybe summarize it because yeah i, I mean and then you know you two and then i like to think myself and then dan i mean the fact that you guys are the ones running kind of natty news daily or whatever i mean you three are you know yeah you've got a lot going on in your lives you, you've got families relationships kids jobs i mean you're not your lives just aren't bodybuilding all the time. And then look at everything you guys are doing and getting accomplished. I mean, mm-hmm. you're right. And anyone, I, I would like to think that if people, you know, came across my Instagram or whatever, saw me in the gym and, or, or just even had a conversation with me about bodybuilding, it's, you know, I, this is not, it's not the only thing I do. And yeah, I, I tell people all the time, you can, you can be a competitive bodybuilder if you want to. I mean, or, or you don't even have to be competitive, right? That's that's an aspect of the sport, but bodybuilding in, in general is, is you don't it's not just about you know getting on putting the trunks on and getting on stage. Um mm-hmm. uh, the big thing I tell people all the time is hey I, I really didn't get into this until I was like 34 or 35 years old. Like, you don't have to be I used to beat myself up on this all the time. You don't have to be 18, 19, 20, 13, 14, 15 years old to, to start bodybuilding, right? I mean, you literally can get into it at any age and 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 do well, right? There, there's tons of people that probably start in their 40s and 50s and 60s and, and still come and, and they do compete and they compete at a high level, right? I mean, yep. this is, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's if it's something that you're really passionate about it and and and, and want to do, then yeah, you, you can certainly can certainly do it. Yeah, yeah, and and understanding that you can compete without having aspirations of being top five in worlds, right? Like, how many people are going to reach that? That was a statistic that we kind of talked about, Phil. Right? Like, someone's got to be last. But if you're okay with being last, because guess what? This prep taught you a lot about yourself, where it was the first one you did and you lost like 40 pounds that you haven't been able to do, or not that I'm 
you know, encouraging people to use a contest prep as a means of like weight loss transformations, but there are a lot of positives to the sport, especially when you take the competitive aspect out of it. Right. And I think that's something if we want to even think like from the sport as a business perspective, we need to lean into that. Right. Like there is a very low barrier to entry, Phil. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Right. This is like combining like beer league softball with the MLB all together. Right. Like everyone can play. There's certainly going to be like those like Alberto Nunez's that are like, all right, that guy is, you know, he's going somewhere with it. But for every one of him, there's 15 dudes that just want to get in a little bit better shape and you'll have some cool photos and have a good time with it. And that's completely fine. And that's only going to help grow the sport because it grows the awareness of the sport. Beauty. Exactly. All right. Well, people, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. If you guys have insights to this subject matter, comment below. Comment them below because I think this is something that is, like, not talked about enough because it's, again, like, social media kind of glamorizes the extremes and you know, this conversation is probably like the a complete opposite of that, but I think it's more important for people to learn and kind of get an understanding of what what the vast majority probably do with this whole bodybuilding thing. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, we'll keep the conversation going. Phil, we appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you for uh, closing out chapter three of the Phil and Natty News Chronicles. Yeah, we'll keep no, it going. I, yeah, this, this novel's not over, right? <laughs> right. It's not over until I win. <laughs> All right, people, we appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.